All right, guys, welcome back to another special video. Today we're going to be doing a Resident Evil tier list um, of all the games. I think to kick it off, we'll just knock out the games I personally never played, just to get them out the way. Um, I never played Umbrella Gorps. Never played Dead Aim. I never played Gaiden. I never played um, Gun Survivor. And I never played... Um, uh, Resident Evil Survivor. Those are, I think, the only ones. Let me just double check through here. Yeah, I've literally played everything else. And then uh, this is an up to date tier list, so it includes 8 and Reverse. Um, reverse, I will say, I absolutely, I got, I was one of the lucky few that got into the closed beta, and I absolutely loved Reverse. Um, from we only got to play we got to play with like a pretty decent sized roster and uh we only were able to play one map but my god did i play that one map over and over again until that beta closed uh it was fun it was um competitive i thought the the roster of characters were relatively balanced uh, for the most part for the fact that it was a beta like i didn't really feel like any character was broken or overpowered i do think that there were like two characters like Jill and and Hunk that um almost almost got to a little bit where they felt like overpowered, but um I feel like they were still pretty balanced. Uh Ada, I think, needed a little bit of a buff. She did have like a um uh a high uh shoot, what's the word I'm looking for? Um can't think of what I'm trying. I'm having a brain fart. I can't think. I, she had a um a high ceiling in terms of uh, playing her, but so I kind of think she needed a little buff to make her a little bit more fun to play because she was like um not really play that much in the in the closed beta. But I heard that they did fix her in the open beta, but the open beta had um server problems because they weren't expecting an influx so many people an influx of so many people coming into play. So they have to shut down the, the open beta. Now the game's been on delay till this year. So can't really rank this until the full game comes out. Um, What do we got here? First up, Resident Evil Code Veronica. So absolutely love this game. I think it's the best of the fixed camera angle um, Resident Evil games. It is a very difficult and punishing game. But once you learn... um. Once you learn things in this game that make it difficult, or it just adds to the replay value. So, like, uh, what I mean is, like, there's certain key items that you might need to leave in the box so that you can have access to them in the second area of the game. But you wouldn't know that unless you played through the game once, and it just adds to that replay value. And eventually, you can get to a point with Code Veronica where it's just extremely fun to play because you know how to handle certain situations and uh code veronica has the best soundtrack in all of the resident evil games in my opinion so yeah i absolutely love this game it gets a lot of hate um i think it deserves more love and for me it is an s rank game i absolutely enjoy playing this game um resident evil 1 remake so this is like what people look at as the quintessential remake like this is in the series uh um revered as the best remake ever and i agree it is a very good game actually i think it's great uh i i would put it in a rank though it's not s rank for me um still a rank is just really well really good still a great game so yeah s rank is just for me reserved for games that are just just on another level for me um and yeah, Resident Evil 1 Remake there. It doesn't have the same amount of replay value as the games that are going to be an S rank for me, but still a great game overall. Uh, next, we got Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. So this one's going to go in B rank. I, I enjoy this game. I think it's good, but I don't have the strong connection that a lot of people have for it. There's a lot of game mechanics and stuff in here that I think are great and add to replay value, but... In terms of like characters and story is just kind of lacking for me although some of those game mechanics really are fun like having the the choice system and 
um, given the choice to fight Nemesis or not fight him and stuff like that. It's really fun to play. So yeah, um, I think B-Tier is good for that for me. Uh, next up, we got Resident Evil Village. Now this game, I absolutely love this game. This game came out um, at the beginning of 2021. And uh, yeah, this is my second favorite game in the series. It is just up there. I really enjoyed the story. I love the direction that the, the the game and the story is going in. I love the I love the new characters they introduced. The villains were all great. Um yeah, I just absolutely love Village. Um it's not perfect. I mean, even the the games that I'm adding to S tier are not all perfect. Like there's stuff in it that um like I guess some minor stuff, maybe a little bit of a few major things, but overall they're damn near perfect for me. Uh what do we got here? Oh Resident Evil 4. This is my favorite Resident Evil game of all time. This game is just special on so many levels to me. It's the game that got me into the series. It's my first ever Resident Evil game. I remember the first time I played it, I was just completely hooked. Uh, it was my first Resident Evil. When I played it, I struggled, man. I struggled. I s stuck in that village portion, the, verse, the first village, um, I guess you call it Horde, the chainsaw guy uh salvador um but <laughs> when i did finally get through the game and learned it and got used to the controls and stuff like that man that game is extremely fun it is a genre defying game and i absolutely love that game but yeah that's my number one resident evil game second village um resident evil operation raccoon city so I think I'm going to put this in C tier. I think this game was extremely fun to play with friends, but it did have connection issues. And um, I personally kind of like the what if scenario that they did in this game. It was really cool. The introduction to some new characters, um, umbrella characters at that. Uh, but it was pretty cool take, I think, and a very fun game. But um, it was riddled with with uh, connection issues and and um glitches and stuff like that so it was kind of brought down the experience but i'd say i had fun with friends so so i think i'd put this here no i think it's good seats here all right so next up we got uh dark side chronicles which i think this game is great I love this game. I love the remixes of OST. Again, like I said, Code Veronica has some of the best music and probably the best music to me in all of Resident Evil. But Dark Side Chronicle put a remix. They remix those uh, mu uh, songs and uh, or soundtracks, I mean, and put like an orchestral vibe on them on a whole nother level. And absolutely loved the remixes. And a lot of people don't like this game because the the shaky cam is atrocious, but I feel like since when I was younger and I played this, I was more more patient with those things. So I kind of built like an adaptability to it. So the shaky cam, although atrocious, I can admit is atrocious. I feel like the scenarios and all the cool scenarios in it um, outweighed the shaky cam for me. I was able to put up with the shaky cam. I still can. The shaky cam doesn't really bother me but i will admit it is atrocious and i know i understand when people say they can't play the game because of because of um the shaky cam but yeah i put this in b tier i absolutely love the the scenarios and the take on the story in here uh we got the original resident evil so i put this in b tier it is probably um it is a good game, but it is the least favorite out of the fixed camera angle era games to me. Um, I feel like uh, Code Veronica is way better. Uh, I think Resident Evil 2 is way better. I think Resident Evil 3 is also way better. But this game is still good. Introduction to the uh, start of the story of the Resident Evil verse. Yeah, we get to meet some of our beloved characters in there. Uh, 
Yeah, not much I have to say about it. Uh, Revelations 2. I like this game, um, but I'm not a fan of the chapter stuff uh, in Revelations 1 and 2. Um, the berry sections really bogged this game down. Uh, they were really boring, and it was kind of repetitive, and it was you're just going through the same areas that you did with, like, Clara and Moira. And, yeah, the berry sections really were not that fun, and it really brought this game down to me. But the game was still fun. It was a good game. Pretty um good story. Uh, yeah, so I think I put Revelations 2 here. Actually put, yeah, for that order. Um, doing on time. Looking good so far. Uh, next up we got Resident Evil 5. Now, I think this game gets a lot of flack, but for me, this game is just extremely good um, in terms of co-op. I think the story was kind of... I wasn't really the biggest fan of some of the direction they took in the story, but what made, what carries this game and makes it so fun is the co-op. Co-op is probably the best co-op in the series from the multiplayer, from the Team Slayer, Team Survivor the mercenaries, even the story. The co-op is just great in this game. It makes this game so fun and adds so much to the replay value. I spent countless hours playing co-op and doing the multiplayer with this game with my friends. I met a lot of friends through the multiplayer of this game. This game is just special to me. And I think I put it, I put it in A rank just, to, just because of the simple fact that I met so many of my longtime friends through Resident Evil 5's multiplayer. And the co-op was so fun. Um, yeah, I think I think I put it. I think I put it in eight here, just because it's special to me. Um, next, we got Resident Evil Outbreak. So I'm gonna put this in C tier. I think Outbreak was ahead of its time. It uh, didn't really have the 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 internet connection. And people didn't really have the internet needed to play this game back then. If this game came out now, I think it would be a lot. It would be received a lot better. Um, it's definitely in need of a remake. But this game's most fun when you're playing with four friends. But the problem is, excuse me, uh, the problem is that it's so difficult and such a hassle to play this game because you have to like. Um, download it and play it through an emulator to play online. And if I I heard recently that even on emulator, it's for some reason they changed something, so now it's even more difficult to play online. Yeah, so it's just a hassle. But yeah, I'd say it's it's C tier, and it's definitely definitely still fun to play with friends. Um, we got Outbreak File Two. I think this is. A lot better than Outbreak File 1. I believe what made this game so fun was, if I remember correctly, when I played through it with my friends, it added like a lock on to the aiming, so it just made shooting enemies and like flying enemies better. Um, it's definitely better than File 1. Um, but I think both games are pretty average. It's just what really shines with this game is just uh, the co op aspect with your your friends being able to go through like a story and solve puzzles and um stuff with your friends was cool and what also made it cool was that everybody could split up and go in different directions we weren't like tethered to each other which i thought was dope but yeah really 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 pretty um fun game but it's it has a lot of issues that if it got a remake it'd definitely be great uh next up we got resident evil 6 so I'm going to put this game in C tier. This game is like a mixed bag. The story of this game is like really bad. And the direction they took with this game is extremely bad in, ter in terms of like how they try to appease so many parties and try to appeal to so many genres that this game was just a complete fucking mess. Um... It was just all over the place. I think my favorite scenario in the whole game was um, probably Leon and Helena's 
horror because it was the most tame and had the most of the survival horror aspect. Uh, Chris was pretty much like fucking Call of Duty, bro. Like that shit. The only thing that separated it from Call of Duty is the fact that it wasn't first person. Like that shit was just so heavy in action, running and gunning. The whole game was full of action and cute quick time events. I don't have a problem with quick time events if they're used sparingly. I think Resident Evil 4 handles them perfectly, but 6 just went off the rails. Um, I think what really keeps 6 at C tier for me is the fact that, again, it had co-op. So playing it, playing with a friend really made this gonna, uh, game a lot more enjoyable. Um, if it didn't have co-op, this game would probably be an F tier. All right, next up we got Resident Evil Zero. So this game's going D tier, and I can explain. Not a bad game. It's just that this game is so difficult for me to get through. I think the entire train section is so great. Um, and once you get past that train section and you get to like the mansion part, um, on on. Uh, coupled on the fact that uh, the inventory system in this game sucks for the simple fact that you have to drop items on the floor and shit just made this game such a chore and so difficult to get through and then on top of that it was just so the story was just so boring and it was just so slow paced and I just it was just so hard to get through this game and I think it, the game really declined heavily after the train portion of the game and it has the least amount of replay value for me. Uh, I thought the, the swapping system between Billy and Rebecca was cool, though. I thought it was fun. But besides that, it's just a chore to get through this game. That's why it's in d -tier. Um, It's definitely a, a better made game than uh, the 4 and C tier. But again, there are aspects of these games. The fact that a co-op with your friends... Like, literally the four games in C-Tier, uh, six and two Outbreaks and Orc um, are carried by the co-op. Uh, if Zero had co-op where you someone could play Billy and the other person could play Rebecca, I feel like it'd be a lot more enjoyable. And I'd probably raise it up. Probably to a B-Tier. It'd probably, probably be higher than B because I think that the game is really bogged down with how boring the mansion section is. Um, Resident Evil Revelations. This is in the same vein as Zero. This game is such a chore to get through, and it's the story is just also uninteresting and boring. And what we got from the trailer was not what was like only a small portion of what this game had to offer. Like I thought this whole game was gonna be about Jill trying to find Chris, and it was sort of like it had like this mystery to it. Um, but that's like literally that's like the first part of the game and then after that story goes story goes off rails and just an uninteresting and uh not fun way uh resident evil resistance this game is just bad and here's why Th this game has potential but it's so unbalanced and such a mess that it's just not fun to play like even with friends when I get on this game with my friends, or when we did get on and played this, uh, for most part with like the co-op games, like six, five, even the outbreaks and orc, they're still fun to play, even though they're bad aspects of the game. Resistance is just not fun. Resistance is absolutely not fun. Me and my friends could probably play about maybe two to three games before we get so frustrated and like the life is drained out of us that we stop playing. Resistance is such an unbalanced and complete mess, and it needs a lot of work. And uh, I think it has potential if they can balance the game and work out those kings, it could definitely rise higher. But as of now, it's just an F. Uh, next up, we got Resident Evil 3 Remake. I got this game at a tier um i absolutely love resident evil 3 remake um i understand that a lot of fans were upset about the stuff they cut 
from uh, Resident Evil 3, given that uh, Nemesis, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis had so many uh, replayable factors to it, uh, gameplay mechanics that helped that game, but they kind of like cut down all of that. And the direction they took with Resident Evil 3 was they focused on the characters and story and made it like a much more linear experience. And for me, that worked out great because I didn't have such a strong connection to the original Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. But I know a lot of fans hate the game for the simple fact that they cut so much of the stuff they love. And I do agree the game wasn't shown nearly as much love as Resident Evil 2 Remake. Um, although I will say team that worked on Resident Evil 3 um, I think that blame falls on them because that's the direction they took because um, a different team worked on Resident Evil 2 and these games were worked on side by side but yeah I absolutely loved what they did with the characters in Resident Evil 3 and I loved what they did with the, the story so it's an A, an a tier for me uh, another E tier here got Resident Evil 7 so this game like um revive the series in a way it's essentially the way i look at it personally it's like the resident evil 4 of its time um it took the it took the gameplay aspect in a new direction with the first person and it really dug its claw into the survival horror aspect and the original um pillars of resident evil and i think it nailed it perfectly uh there's still some stuff there like the the main protagonist Ethan Winters was just hollow and empty. He had like maybe like a few dialogue lines there, but I think they they spliced that up a little bit in Village. Still not good or great in Village, but it was there. And by the end of the story in Village, I felt like I I felt bad for Ethan and and uh, kind of wish we got more with him. But yeah, but Resident Evil Seven was such a a great game. Damn near. It was damn near an S tier game for me. Um, my third favorite um Resident Evil game all the time, Resident Evil Two Remake. This game is so fun. I played this game so many times. I think this personally to me is a better remake than Resident Evil One. I just love the direction they took with it and how they handle things. I wish they had made the scenarios. A little bit more cohesive and i wish they had the zapping system but they didn't um yeah i absolutely love resident evil 2 remake i think resident evil 2 remake and resident evil 1 remake are i think resident evil 2 has clearly for me has the edge it's an s rank over but like i feel like those two games are just such great remakes i but i again i still think two takes the edge for me mm, oh mercenaries 3d so this game is a solid b tier for me it's what can i say it's mercenaries mercenaries on your 3ds and it's fun you can take it's portable you have access to the character only gripe with the game is the fact that uh pretty much every character you would want is in there with the exception of Leon, which I don't know or understand why he wasn't in this game. Um, when they had all the other main protagonists, I just thought it was extremely weird. And they had Hunk in this game. If I remember correctly, I think his model is ripped from Resident Evil 4. So it's like, why didn't they just grab Leon from Resident, Resident Evil? Why didn't they grab Leon's model? But yeah, he's not in this game. Not sure why. Um, but the game's still really fun. Ooh, next we got Umbrella Chronicles. So, Umbrella Chronicles? Um, I think it was such a fun game. I loved the takes and the scenarios that they had. Uh, doesn't have that shaky cam mess like Dark Side Chronicles, but I do believe Dark Side Chronicles is better because the the scenarios um, were just overall the scenarios and the additions they made in Dark Side Chronicles were just overall better. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, next we got Resident Evil Two. I'm gonna put this in, put it here, but I really like this game, but.
I think I think I'll put it in low A tier. I think this is a very good game. Introduction to Leon and Claire, two fan favorites. Um, this game really amped it up from Resident Evil One. Like it was such a great sequel to Resident Evil One, and I think it just uh, Resident Evil One set like a bar, and then Resident Evil Two blew past that bar and set another level. And um, yeah, I just really loved Resident Evil Two. It's a good, it's a good game. Uh, and that's it for the tier list. So that's my tier list. I'm just gonna look over it real quick. See here, uh, is there any changes I want to make? Quite honestly, the the S tier rank is solidified. This does not change. Sometimes these change around, like, um, like maybe this could be like a B tier. I guess it depends on how I feel. Um, but I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this list. Uh, yeah, this is my Resident Evil tier list. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below, um, what your guys' tier list is. Uh, let me know what you think of my tier list. Uh, be, be respectful in the comment section. Um, cause you know, everyone has their opinions. So just cause you like a game and someone doesn't, doesn't mean you have to be disrespectful. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought in the comment section. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.